My dad got me started uh, just when I was really young, probably like four or five, and I would just go out and hit with him while he was playing, and he would drop me off at 150 yards and just say, keep hitting until you get to the green. And then I never really took it that serious until um, my great grandpa saw me hit and he was like, she has a really good natural swing, like let's try and get her some lessons and that's kind of how it all happened. Yeah, so my first real set of clubs actually came from Dustin Johnson. Um, I was playing in a hole-in-one contest and they asked me in an interview what I would want if I got a million dollars. And I said I would ask my dad to buy me new golf clubs. And so my coach went and told Dustin that and him being the nice guy that he is, he asked the tailor-made people to make me a custom set of clubs. And so I actually got to open them on Christmas day and that was really exciting. <laughs> Yeah, I think the golf community is big, but it's also really small because you know a lot of people. And like you said, I know a lot of the girls from my high school. I grew up playing with Grayson and now she's at Clemson. So now I get to see her at college events and it's kind of fun to see where she is now because I saw her when she was in seventh grade. So kind of experienced her growth through the game. And then um, Isabella Rawl is the same. I've actually babysat her since she was really tiny. So. <laughs> Um, keeping up with her and now she's in high school and they have state today so I've just kind of text them and um, wish them good luck and check in and see how they're doing. Yeah I think ever since the beginning I mean when I first started playing competitive golf around like eight or nine my dad would start taking me to LPGA tournaments and the first golfer I ever met was Natalie Golbis and I was watching her and she came outside the ropes and walked with me and just started talking to me and as soon as she left I was like dad I want to be just like her like I want to play golf and so I mean from a very young age like that's what I've wanted. Um, I think like in AJJ when I started playing um, more at a higher level and like actually believing that I was good enough to play was when I started getting into the invitationals and just playing against people from all over the world is when you kind of realize like, okay, I can do this. Playing in the US Open, I mean, is a dream come true. I mean, that's something I've been looking forward to for a really long time. And then not only to get to play, but to make the cut and um, just know that my game was good enough to play against the best players in the world. Um, it was honestly one of the greatest experiences of my life. The first tee the first day was a little bit intimidating, um, but I mean once you get out there it's just golf and once you realize that it's just golf and golf doesn't change no matter where you are, um, it's, it's more relaxing. The thing about any sport and golf specifically is it takes a lot of time to develop. I mean, I've been playing and practicing for competitive golf since I was eight. And so that's a long, long journey and a lot of hours. And it takes a lot from me. It takes a lot from my coach. It takes a lot from my parents. And um, just to finally get to the point where it's almost time to turn pro. There's been a lot of hours behind all of the work that I've put in. Yeah, the Curtis Cup, I mean, just to even make that team was very special. It's so hard to make a team of eight in the, in the U.S. because it's so good. There's so many strong players, and to be one of those eight people was um, truly just so special. And then to go and represent our country and go to New York and play Quaker Ridge, um, it was just amazing. I mean, it was way better than I thought it would be. I know every time you hear someone talk about a team event, they're like, oh, it's so great, but it really is. Like, you make some of the best friends, some of the greatest memories, and I mean, anytime you get to wear the red, white, and blue, it's pretty special. They originally spelled my name wrong on my first bag, and the funniest part is that I didn't even notice. Uh, it didn't, didn't notice until the last round, and I had been there for a week, and the girl I was playing against, she said, I'm pretty sure your name's spelled wrong. And I was like, you're right, it is spelled wrong. 
Um, but then when you guys asked about getting a bag, I'm like, it's great. Then I have two bags. So, of course, I'd love to give y'all one. Um, and obviously, I would want you guys to have the one with the name spelled right. So. <laughs> So I have two records in USGA match play, just both losing records, but it's okay. Whatever it takes to get in the history books, I guess. But um, I mean, both experiences were like great learning opportunities. I mean, to play against my teammate this year, um, I mean, in the semifinals, you know, it's going to be tough because everybody wants to make it to the finals. Um, and she's a really great player. And I never played against her before, but um, just knowing that I had what it takes to make it that far and I was really close to making it to the finals, I mean, just to make it that far and that strong of a competition is hard in itself. So I was really proud of the way I played, especially it being my last USAM. Um, I mean, you always want to have the opportunity to win at some point and just knowing that I got that close was... Um, just, I mean, as good as you can hope for. It's great. He really knows how to, like, calm me down and get me centered. Because sometimes I might get a little anxious or a little excited. Um, and he really knows how to, like, be the role that he needs to be. Um, and it's kind of funny because growing up, he wasn't like that. When I first started when I was younger, he was really hard on me. And kind of like a typical golf dad <laughs> um, but he's really changed and grown a lot um, now he's just more of the positive and he like always knows what to say and sometimes if there's nothing to say he just doesn't say anything so he's just always there for me and I really do enjoy when he gets to catch No, my dad will not be my caddy. Um, funny story, he caddied for me in my first US Open um, just because, I mean, that's a really special experience and I wanted him to be able to caddy. We could do that together and we got to the first tee and he was more nervous than I was and I was like, this is not good. <laughs> you need a caddy out there who like, knows what they're doing and he was so nervous. Like I had to start walking off the yardages and on one hole, we walked 30 yards in front of the 100 yard marker and he was like, okay, we have like 130. I'm like, no, we subtract 30 yards. But it was fun. Um, and you know, we both had a great time. Five years from now, hopefully being successful in the LPJ. Um, I don't know what that looks like, but I mean, hopefully have having one, at least one or more LPJ events. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I don't really have a specific goal. I mean, obviously, I want to win as much as I can. And um, winning a major would be pretty special, and that's definitely a big goal of mine. Um, but, I mean, my main goal, I think, is to just go out there and put in as much work as I can and just see where that takes me. I mean, I've never really been one to get upset if I miss a goal or something. Just... I know ultimately like God has a plan and I just kind of go with the flow. So whatever happens, I'm okay with. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely am. I mean, going pro is something I've looked forward to for a long time now. So after playing the US Open and making the cut is when I really started to get antsy and I was like, okay, I wanna go play. I wanna go try this out for real. and. Um, I mean, it'll definitely be hard leaving it behind because I've had so many great memories and it's just been such a fun journey up till now. But I mean, I'm definitely ready.